This is one video in a series of videos that show how to use Oracle Apex 5 to build a working web application, a prototype. It won't be fully featured, but it'll be a working application that uses a database in Oracle XE. There are earlier video series in YouTube um, for previous versions of Apex. You can work along with the video by getting the scripts that are available at the URL shown here. Be sure and make the URL case sensitive, so put a capital D, not a lowercase d. You can also, as an alternative, request the scripts be emailed by going to the second link and using the contact page to request the scripts. In this video, we're going to look at UI defaults, user interface defaults. I'm logging in as Debbie, one of the designers and the design team for this application, because her one of her items on the to-do list is to create the user interface defaults. So I'm going to go into SQL Workshop. I guess actually, let me back out real quick and just remind you. that if I run this application and I'll need to log in when I look at my projects report and form I'm getting column headings based on the actual field names and that's what we're getting ready to modify so I'm going to go to the home page for application express I'm going to go into the object browser and I'm going to select projects and we see here the names of the columns I'm going to set the user defaults by clicking on UI defaults and once you've set these then whenever you create a form or a report the the labels defined in the user interface defaults will be used and they can be much more user friendly than your abbreviated kind of vague or uh, hard to understand names for your fields. The first time you come in, you'll get create defaults. Once you started setting UI defaults, you'll get an edit option. So I'm going to click create defaults, and it launches a little dialog box. And then notice up here along the breadcrumb that we have jumped away from the object browser uh, interface and we're now under utilities user interface defaults table dictionary so you could have come here directly if you wanted to but we started from the object browser now what we see are projects and students I'm going to synchronize and synchronize defaults and then I'll get a list of all my tables and I'm going to go into projects to start with and I see the column name and the corresponding label based on the column name. I'm going to click on the first field and modify that. I'm having a hard time typing. So I've changed the label. I've added some help text and we'll see how that comes into play a little bit later. If I want to, I can modify the display width. And then I know I want to change the other columns in the table. So rather than just hitting apply changes, I'm going to go over here and click next because I can make the modifications for all of them and then apply all the changes. I won't modify, I won't change the width, and I think I have one more field. This is for the client, uh, and I'm going to say this is the foreign key field. And eventually I might modify that. It's meant to display the client ID, but later on we'll see how we put the name of the client in place of the actual primary key value. So I'm going to go ahead and apply changes. 
and I now see what my labels will be. And in a, in a few minutes, we'll see the difference because I'm going to regenerate the reform with report that we did in a previous video for projects, and we'll see the difference. And we'll put that report and form in place of the first ones that we created. I'm going to pause the video, though. Let me go up to Table Dictionary and see all of my tables. I'm going to take the time right now to go through and create user-friendly labels, UI defaults, for all the fields in the tables. And once I've done that, I'll come back. So I have gone through, and I'll click on a couple of these just to show you. I've modified the label so that it's more user-friendly. And now, uh, whenever I generate a report or a form, these labels will be used, and it'll make the interface more user-friendly. I'm going to go back to the Application Builder under Student and Teams. And now what I'll do is create a new set of two pages, one for the report on projects and one for the form on projects. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly without explaining things because we've done that previously. So I filled this out and added breadcrumbs, which you may or may not see a need for, but I'll do it for this particular one. And then select my data source, which would be projects. And in this case, I do not want to associate this page with a navigation menu item. I could actually probably pick this option, but I want to show you how you can go in and edit the menu item manually to open a different page. So for the report columns, by default, we get all the columns, and it says use interface default. I'll go ahead and stay with the default icon. I've modified the page name and region title. We have our display columns for the form. I'll leave the default for insert, update, delete capabilities and create this page. So when I've created the page, I get uh, Apex comes back in Page Designer. I'm going to step up a level to the application itself. So the original report and form are page number four and five. Yours will probably be different. That's fine. My second one is list of projects and project data. So the next thing I'm going to do is delete the old report and form. I'm going to select it here. And I see the page number. You just need to be careful. If you're in doubt if, as to whether or not you're in the right page, you also see the title here. You can always run it and verify. You want to be sure that you do not delete your home page or, or the 101, the login page. Anything else could be uh, pretty easily regenerated. So I'm going to click the Utilities and say Delete Page. And delete that page. So I want to delete the, the uh, form page, and that's not one. By default, we come back to page one because we're, we have removed page four. I'm now going to go to five. And I could run that just to verify that, yes, this is the form that uses the field names. Then I could go back to editing that page, page 5, page 5, project data, go to utilities, and delete this page. So when I get back to the application level and I try to run, or I can run the application, but now I click on this navigation link and I get an error message, and that's what we'll fix next. So I go back to the application, and what I want to do is, because the navigation bar is something used across multiple pages, it is a shared component. So I'm going to go to Shared Components. I'm going to look under Navigation and go to nav Navigation Menu, and I only have the primary navigation menu. And here's the one that's not working properly. So I'll select Projects List. And I haven't talked about this, but just notice that when you come into the properties of some item, 
you will have different sections which are also represented as tabs along the top so you can quickly jump to a particular section if you want or you can simply scroll down so if I click entry it narrows it down to just entry if I do conditions it gives me just the conditions section if I do show all then I can simply scroll down and see all of those uh, properties I actually want to be in target and I want to look at my page number options and four no longer exists I want it to open the report first so I go to list of projects and then I go ahead and apply the changes. Then I return to my application and run the application. And now when I click Projects List, I get the report I just created, which was generated using the user interface defaults, the UI defaults. When I click on the edit icon, I see the form that uses the user interface default. One other thing I wanted to point out is I did take the time to type in help text. So if you click on a question mark out to the right of a field in the form, what you typed in will pop up in a help text box. So some things are obvious, but other things we need a little bit of help on. Also, keep in mind as I go through these videos, I'm going to make it a point to talk about primary keys and foreign key fields. I don't know that you would put this foreign key field information in the help text other than I use these videos for teaching my class and I want to emphasize the role of primary and foreign key fields. So returning to the application, we're off to a good start on building our uh, web pages for maintaining the data in the database. In the next, and that's what we'll talk about at the beginning of the next video. We'll make a plan for what kind of forms uh, we want to create for the tables in the database.